everybody, it's your boy Shante. We're going on a dirt pile and Z Z Z. Listen, listen. My challenge for this year was to learn two things. I wanted to finally learn how to do feeding cornos and finally learn how to do not list box braids. And I did them large, of course. Keep on watching and you'll see how I achieved this beautiful large not list box braid look. Enjoy. <laughs> Alright you guys, so I prepped my hair from the night before, I washed, deep conditioned, I did blow it out this time around because I'm doing large knotless box braids, but you really don't necessarily have to blow your hair out, but if you are going to, definitely make sure you're using your heat protectant, because I had to <laughs> double up on that. Um, I'm using the jam to help straighten out my parts a bit. I would part my hair as neatly as I possibly can um, and then use the jam to make it super sleek and super straight. I'm holding a, um, a mirror in my hand but there's a big mirror behind me to help guide me and guide my parts. It definitely was tedious. It took a second for your girl <laughs> and I've been doing this for a second. Um, but if you're too annoyed and you don't want to necessarily do all of that, see if you can have some help, someone help you. It will make this process a lot easier and a lot quicker. This is, it's not super, super hard, but it's kind of like challenging because it's my first time. Um, it's turning out as it should, but I'm just gonna finish it. I'm gonna finish it. Huge braiding tip. Definitely get you guys, yourselves, one of these braiding racks. Um, it helps, especially with doing knotless box braids where you have to keep grabbing a piece of hair each time as you're braiding, it definitely, definitely makes it a lot easier. I purchased this one from the beauty supply store for around maybe $15 or so, but they also sell them in, um, I guess you could call them artsy craft stores like Michaels or Hobby Lobby, you can even buy it from Amazon. Um, but it helps because with knotless box braids, you have to continuously pick up a piece of hair and braid down and you don't want to pause let go of the braid that you're doing or the plait that you're doing grab a piece of hair have to restart and then it unravels and everything like that you definitely do not want that so definitely invest in one of these racks Okay, I'm gonna tell them something like it. <laughs> I think I have a bit of hang of it or grip on my braids towards the front because I don't have to be doing too much. Alrighty, we are near the end. I'm missing a lot of thinning ends. So I'm trying to get rid of the colors I'm just gonna I'm just gonna cut it so I forgot to mention I also put some of the jam on the base of the braids so it looks shiny and sleek um, it adds a bit of sheen and glossiness to the hair but let's get into this braid so for me I would definitely recommend knowing how to plait first. If you're gonna try to do knotless box braids, you need to know that much at least. Um, but it is really simple as you go along. So you braid your hair down probably once or twice. I'm gonna say plait it down so we don't mix it up with braiding hair. You're gonna plait your hair down once or twice. The finger that is holding the plait in the middle so for instance, each plait has three legs. The leg that's in the middle, um, most times my index and my thumb are holding that um, leg. I add the braiding hair to that piece and also to the 
leg to the right of it and then I braid maybe once or twice also I pull it down just a little bit braid it a little bit and then I add another piece adding it to the section in the middle as well as to the section that is on the left hand side correction the right hand side All right, let's do this again. So you're gonna plait your hair down probably two to three times, just a little bit. You're gonna grab your piece of braiding hair and add it to the leg that's in the middle and to the right of that leg. Braid it down maybe two, three times, and you're gonna add another piece. You're doing this so that each leg feels even as you're braiding it down. You don't want one leg to be skinny, another leg to be fat. The braid won't look neat and, um, you know, smooth and cohesive. So use your judgment when you're adding hair. Don't add too much. Um, when I pre-sectioned the hair on the rack, each section was even, so that made it simple for me. If you want to add more for length, add further down so it doesn't add to the width of the braid. But for the most part, just take your time. It was trial and error for me. It might be trial and error for you. It was hard in the back for me um, as I was, you know, it's hard to position your hands a certain way. But take your time. Let me know how you guys did. These are the final results. I definitely enjoyed doing this and I would definitely do it again. Please like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. Thank you guys so very much for the love and continued support. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye.